We now got to take a big boy step into a more general approach to the uh, line integral. So so far, we have considered a line integral where we say in x and y, we go from point A to point B, and we always consider so far the work as being the integral along this line, call it L, of the force dotted with the infinitesimal line segment. So we just calculated the work a bunch, along a bunch of tiny little line segments and adding them up, that becomes our integral when we're considering infinitesimal line segments. So that's the work. And we have said, okay, we don't want to deal with the dot product of this form, we write it out in component form, in which case we get the components of x, the force along the x direction multiplied by this displacement in x direction is the work done. Same thing for y. And I'm just going to leave it like that. But in principle, you can add the c component here as well. But let's just keep it to two dimensions. Since I draw this as a two dimensional case. So this is our Cartesian system. This is what a reference frame we're somewhat comfortable working with from Physics 1. We'll be using it in Physics 2 as well. Um, and keep in mind, these are components. They're not magnitudes. So they could be negative. These fx, fy are the components and not the magnitudes. OK. Sometimes we may say, well, the geometry is different. Maybe we go along a circle. So let's say, I'm um, going to write slightly different here. I'm going to make a Cartesian coordinate system. Here's our x. Here's our y. And then I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to calculate the work as I go along a circle, for example. So this is my path. It's a circle. And then say, OK, we're going to carry out this integration. So let's say we have a force given. We have a force um, that's given as a function x and y. So it has some x component, unit vector i, plus some y component, unit vector j. We can take the components here, plug in here, and dx. It's like, oh well, shoot, dx is not going to be as, as nice here because it's going to vary with angle and so forth. So that might be a better approach. Let's transform it into what we call polar coordinates. So we do a coordinate transformation. If you take Calc 3, you'll learn how to do that by using Jacobian. I will give you a slightly different approach here, which is what we call it parameterization. The results are exactly the same. But what we're going to uh, assume is that we're going to take and say that this curve, a path, path or curve can be expressed as some function of x and y. So that's the, uh, the assumption. We can take any, any curve and we can describe it as a function of the coordinates x and y. And the coordinates x and y are our Cartesian coordinates. So the example we have with a circle, so the circle, let's say it's a unit circle, so the radius is 1, uh, then that function is one you're familiar with. It's going to be x squared plus y squared and minus 1 is equal to 0. That's our function. So now we have, uh, we have written that curve or that line as a function of x and y. The next step is to say that, um, how should I phrase this here, um, that the, uh, there's a parameter that can, we, that's why we call it parameterization. We can, so we call it a parameter that describes this system. So you're going to call that parameter s. It's just a random variable for now, such that we now have a x can be expressed in terms of that variable, and y can also be expressed in terms of that variable. That's why we call this here parameterization, because we parameterize our coordinates x and y in terms of 
s. And of course, that means that this uh, function for this line or circle, in this case circle, line or curve, can also be expressed in terms of s. So the key over here is to realize it's too difficult to actually integrate along this curve in terms of x and y. We want to write it in terms of something else. But well, now we can write in terms of that s, that component or factor s, or the parameterization variable s. And to do that, we simply use the uh, definition of differentials. So the differential of x, which we have right here, in terms of the differential of s is equal to the derivative of x with respect to the parameterization variable s multiplied by the differential of s. We could do the same thing for y. So it's the derivative of y with respect to x. Sorry, not x. S. S times the differential of s. When we have that, we can take our work and we can rewrite it as this line integral of f of x. But instead of the differential of dx, we're going to write in terms of the parameterization factor, s. And keep in mind, this is a derivative, and this is a differential. Okay. So what we notice here, if I write it out a little bit more clear here, um, mm -hmm. just taking differential ds and move outside the parentheses, is that we have taken our integral where we integrate it along x and along y, and we converted it into a, a one-dimensional integral where we just integrate in respect to this parameterization variable s. And that is provided we have this information. If we know this information, we can calculate uh, the derivatives of the x respect to that parameterization variables. So this is the new or the parameterized line integral of the work. And we're going to use that uh, in some examples in physics 2 and also for those of you taking classical mechanics you will see that quite a bit. So um, this is the, uh, the tool we have, put it in our toolbox, find a good place for it where we can easily find it and then we'll take an example.